Hi, it's Andrea here. I've been teaching at multilingual schools in Zurich, Switzerland for the past 15 years. And together with my husband, we are raising our children in five languages simultaneously. But wait a second, not very long time ago, we were raising them bilingual. How do we get here? Stick with me for some language learning tips. I'll share with you what you should bear in mind to keep you and your family out of trouble. And I also share some thoughts about how we are raising our quintilingual children. And hey, don't forget to subscribe and join my mailing list for more useful content. It's all down in the description. Over time, we have added more languages to our children's language repertoire. But the only thing that I've been trying to avoid since before my children were born is to expose them to too many languages at once and have them learn a bit of each, but not managing to help them develop any to a level that would be considered normal for their age. There are no scientific findings that state that there is a limited number of languages a child can learn simultaneously. Check out this video if you're interested in this topic. But there is a limited amount of time we have each day to expose our children to the desired languages. And that has an impact on how fast they can learn them. Out of a pedagogical and psychological perspective, there are things that can go wrong down the road if parents don't give their multilingual plan a th thought. Let me give you an example. If an eight-year-old girl speaks a little bit of five languages but hasn't developed any at a level that would be um, in a normal range for an eight-year-old, it can become a problem. Why? Because she won't be able to express her needs and desires well enough to be understood by anyone. That leads to frustrations and aggressive behavior. She will have a hard time connecting socially and making friends and could struggle to keep up with the school demands. This situation will therefore have a negative effect on a healthy development of a strong self-esteem and identity. So this is a red flag situation that multilingual parents need to avoid. In addition, multilingual children are often misdiagnosed and stamped as having a disability, when the truth is that the only thing that is happening is that they haven't developed the languages fully yet. It doesn't mean that they have any kind of disability. Multilingualism doesn't cause speech disorders. Please go out to the world and spread the word. It's like playing various instruments. People that can play many instruments are not less musically gifted than those that can only play one, right? Well, it's the same with languages. In both cases, it takes hard work and commitment to get better. So if your multilingual children are not speaking yet or build funny sentences and borrow words from other languages, it just means that they are developing. Nothing more, nothing else. What they need is to continue improving their language skills. They are so-called emergent multilinguals. And so what's required from the parents after they have a solid language learning strategy for their family in place is patience and perseverance. By the way, if you need help with crafting a strategy for your multilingual family, just contact me and we can set up an appointment in the coming weeks to get you on track. You will find more information in the description below. What we did to have a thriving multilingual seven-year-old that is eager and excited to learn languages is to focus our energy in the first years on developing our native strongest languages first using proven language learning methods religiously and outsourcing the additional languages we wanted them to acquire. By outsourcing, I mean that we used the help of daycares, nannies and schools to introduce and develop the languages that we don't use at home. What plan is ideal for you is a very individual question. It depends on the constellation of your family and many other factors. But there is one language learning tip that counts for every multilingual family. And that is the fact that 
the development of the first language or languages benefits the additional language acquisition process. This has been scientifically proven. Students with more developed mother slash father tongues and with more language awareness seem to transfer their experiences to the new languages making the second, third, fourth or fifth language acquisition process easier. And that is exactly what happens. If you invest your time and effort in passing your strongest language to your children in the first years, giving them a solid base to build their language knowledge on, you are already doing 80% of the things right. Looked at it from another perspective, children that can't speak their first languages well and also haven't developed the majority language at a level that is considered to be normal for kids of their age, they suffer. I've taught many of these children in this situation and they tend to become aggressive because they can't communicate with anything else than their fists, can't express their desires and needs in any language well enough. They are often more anxious, develop a low self-esteem. How could they possibly build a strong self-confidence if they can't show what they are really capable of because of the language barrier? So yes, believe it or not, it is possible to mess things up as a parent. It would be interesting to see how the mental health of these kids develop over time. What I know for sure is what I said before, that multilingual children have to keep on developing their language skills. That's the only thing that's going to get them out of the mess. Having seen these less ideal cases, I knew that I needed to take the multilingual language learning process of my children seriously and have a strategy in place since before they were even born. Thankfully, fast forward seven years, I can look at my children and see already amazing results. I wish that too for you and your multilingual family. Laia and Niels communicate effortlessly in four languages. We started raising them simultaneously bilingual since birth, since before birth. Then with 10 months, we introduced a third language and with around two years, the fourth language. My daughter started with the fifth language at the age of five. So they have been growing up since birth simultaneously bilingual and then have been learning all their languages sequentially. We have added new languages slowly, carefully and well planned to their language repertoire. They don't always know the right vocabulary in every language, but they are confident in all of them. And that is important. Laia is starting to speak English and I'm impressed about the accent she has, but what makes me the happiest is that I feel that we have already paved the road for lifelong language learning. And that my friends, should be one of your highest goals when raising multilingual children. Thanks for joining me and please share this video with other Cosmopolitan friends of yours and give me a thumbs up if you found value in it. Check out these other videos and talk to you soon.